So welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Todd Carpenter. I'm the executive director of NISO, one of the co-organizers of this event. Uh, this is um, block two, track two. And joining us in this session is Natasha Simmons and Fiona Murphy. And just want to remind everyone of the code of conduct that's at the bottom of your screen. You click on it uh, to review it. Uh, we will be making sure that everyone plays nice because we are all, I think I like to say the saying, the saying from the previous session, pit of winners. So, um, Natasha, I'm going to pass it over to you, and you're set to go. Great. Thanks very much, Todd, and welcome, everybody. I can see all the little things, all the little notes in the chat, um, people getting very excited about you, getting tea and coffee. Must be morning somewhere um, where you are in the world, or perhaps it's evening. For me, it's just coming up to 2 a.m., so I'm completely bright and sparkly. <laughs> Middle of the night or early morning, we can't really decide, but welcome to the session. Um, so I'm Natasha Simons. I work for the Australian Research Data Commons, and I'm based in Brisbane, Australia. So uh, the ARDC is a government-funded uh entity, so funded by the Australian government, to do fantastical things with research data. And we work with the sector to, to fund projects to be able to build research data infrastructure. And um, we are a long time attendee and participant presenter at various pit up losers. Um, and Fiona, I'll let you introduce yourself. Thanks, Natasha. So yeah, it's a uh more human time of day here. It's um, 4 p.m. in Chichester, just um, in the, in the south coast of England. Um, so I'm um, one of the, the More Brains uh, Cooperative, which is a newly founded group of, of scholarly and research infrastructure consultants, um, some of whom are, I think nearly all of whom actually are, are, are also sort of scattered around Pidapalooza um, because we're, we're all very interested in um, the power and beauty of PIDs, shall we say. So more, more coming now. Excellent. Thank you, Fiona. Okay, so um, I think maybe we'll all consider ourselves more brains in today's session, <laughs> see what contributions we get in the chat. Uh, so I will toggle over to my view of the presentation, which means I won't be able to see your chat for a bit, but Fiona can. So moving over to that. So we are here to talk to you about research projects, which we've called the fulcrum of the research world. So you might be wondering what on earth a fulcrum is, especially if English is not your primary or first language. Uh, so I've done this little diagram to explain what we're talking about. So on the right hand side, a fulcrum is essentially a lever that helps you to lift a really heavy load that you couldn't really do very well without that. So researchers in this diagram are applying some effort um, to research, which is the load on the left hand side. And the way that they're really being helped in doing that is using the fulcrum lever of projects to do that. So projects are kind of like the rocket that um, elevates the research research and enables it to be done with less effort and sort of blows it out of the park, really. So they're the mechanism to be able to do really good research. But what, um, what do we actually know about projects? So from the point of view of openness and transparency in research, projects are much like the Doctor Who's TARDIS. We don't know much about them, but we know they exist and we know there's something very magical that happens inside them. We know that they fly through time and space. We know they're bigger on the inside than what we actually see on the outside. We know that companions in the form of fellow researchers come and go and that there are instruments and equipment like sonic screwdrivers being used during the course of the project. We know that data is recorded and research is conducted. And we also know that Sometimes the chief investigator or um, the doctors even regenerate into a different person. But we generally don't track these things in a systematic way or make information about project activities widely known. 
And a project's very different from a grant. So a grant is something you get. It's something awarded from a funding agency. It's essentially a contract. You uh, receive a certain amount of money for conducting your research. But the project that results from that grant are the things that you do to fulfill the obligations of that grant. And also note that you can sometimes have a project that does not have a grant, it's actually not funded at all perhaps, but similar kind of structure to what I've described. So let's have a look inside, what's actually inside a project. So rather than something you get like a grant, a project is something that researchers do. So some of the examples of the things that happen during a project that they do are, you know, develop a data management plan, tracking the tools and infrastructure, so using tools and infrastructure, the process in analysing data, um, writing a lot of reports and articles, collaborating with researchers at other institutions and a whole lot of other things happen during the course of a project. So it's clear from that that a project doesn't stay the same um, and a project changes over time. So how do we actually track, you know, the things that uh, the researchers interact with during the project, the researchers, the other researchers that they collaborate, perhaps the institutions that are associated with those researchers that they interact with, um, the tools and infrastructure that they use and so forth. So this is where RAID comes in. So RAID is a research activity identifier and it's a persistent identifier for projects. So at a base level, if you look at it simply from the point of view of an identifier, it's a handle. So you'll see down the bottom a string of numbers underneath the word RAID and that's basically the handle. However, its power is that it also has, essentially if you think about it as an envelope that contains other persistent identifiers that record the people, entities and activities that are associated with the project. So some of the examples of things that RAID can record are ORCIDs for other research collaborators involved in the project. Um, the DOIs, digital object identifiers for the data and articles produced. It can record um, identifiers for the tools and services that the project team interact with. So the research infrastructure that they use or the equipment that they log on to. It can record the identifier such as the DOI for um, the grant that, as, that was received for the project and it can record other project identifiers because this project may have a sub-project or it may relate to other projects and so forth. So RAID is operating uh, as a not-for-profit identifier at a production level um, and it's operated by the ARDC, my organisation, Australian Research Data Commons, and but it is actually available free of charge um, globally for anybody to use. And so far over 5,000 RAIDs have been minted. It's a relatively new identifier. I, I kind of like to still think of it as the new PID on the block. So RAIDs put projects at the centre of uh, the research cycle, uh, if you like. So here's a conceptual view of RAID. The RAID would apply just right at the centre there on the project. And those things on the outside circle show the things that happen during the course of a project. So as I've mentioned some of those, you have institutions associated with a project, you have funders associated with a project, you have a team, data, published outputs and so forth. So the project gets the handle identifier and these kind of interactions with institutions, with data that's produced, with services and tools that are used, they're recorded in, in the form of metadata in the persistent identifiers that are used for those things are recorded in the envelope. And um, that creates a timeline of what happened during the course of the project. So here's a little high level view of what it looks like. It's the RAID envelope here. So on the left hand side, you have the handle and then you have a, a different sort of visual view there of some of the things that are recorded during the course of the project from the uh, ORCID of the contributors to the DOIs for the articles and data sets, the RAWs for institutions, etc. So I will now hand to Fiona for uh, the next slides. 
Okay, thanks, Natasha. So um, Natasha has been explaining, I think, very very clearly and quite some you know reasonable detail the fact that uh, RAID is a, a persistent identifier for projects. Um, so now I'm going to describe um, RAID, the RAID project that the More Brains uh, Cooperative is working on with ARDC. So what we're trying to do is um, establish RAID's current status, um, and that's looking um, and talking to its current users, um, so that's active active people who are actually minting the RAID, so people who've indicated interest and, and the need to make a start with using RAIDs. We're looking at what kind of type of users they are, um, and also starting to gather use cases, um, and then thinking about how to, to drop a, a roadmap for future um, services and for um, for governance, thinking about partnerships and so forth. So, so um, we're talking to a couple of people who I think are actually on this call. Um, but we're just trying to build up a picture and think about how how raid um, will ideally be interacting with the the other pids that are that are already um, established. So we've got some preliminary feedback from our from our initial initial um, discussions and explorations, and um, the people that that have already interacted with raid are not surprisingly people who are who already understand the the pid landscape quite well. Um, they have a sense that um, should RAID be adopted reasonably widely, that there actually would be a, quite a bit of power um, added to the, the knowledge about the scholarly landscape. Um, it could work from several perspectives. So not just, for instance, the owner of the project, which would usually be an institution, but also other participants in the scholarly ecosystem. So um, funders uh, would be able to perhaps track how their, their, their grants um, were, were being used um, and could be the publishers um, would also be able to, to understand better how researchers actually use and then develop services. The other more about um, say funded research that um, has perhaps you know compliance requirements that, that are best served with, with something like a RAID. Um, would that work, Natasha? That's yeah, I think so. And I think what Mark's put in there, <clears throat> Mark, we should recruit you to um <laughs> <laughs> to talk about this on the panel, Mark. Um, <laughs> would RAID not potentially be used in OSF to provide a PID for an OSF project? Yes, I think that conceptually is a nice mm -hmm. analogy. Um, because the the other benefit of RAID is that it's machine to machine, so it's not really providing a human interface at this point um you know that's different to dmp tool where they do actually have a human interface they've built uh something that where you can actually see the things you can log on and see them raid not so much it's machine to machine uh at this point uh so obviously there's value in having a human interface over the top of it um and that's maybe somewhere that would go with raid um but yeah so different in in that sense i like that conceptual thing though raid as a, an identifier for an osf project yeah, and to track things related to the project Right. And I mean, you started to touch on this in this question from Martin Fenner about the relationship between RAID, DMP, and Grant ID um, and the overlap between those three. Um, yeah. Yes. So um, the grant identifiers. So I'm not uh, I'm not sure every funder is using, but I know a lot of funders are using the Crossref uh, DOIs for grants at the moment. And in fact, we sort of when we we're not officially a funder um, as ARDC, but we do um, partner with other institutions. We fund projects. You know, we 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 co-fund them. They're called co-investment projects. So we put in four hundred thousand. They put in four hundred. Thousand, and we um, are assigning Crossref DOIs for those, um, so that uh, they can be quoted by the project leads uh, as an attribution statement, and we can track mentions of our funding as people uh, talk about it. Um, and in the Crossref DOI, uh, that Crossref DOI, we actually use um, to re we record that in the RAID envelope. So it's the first thing that gets all of the projects get a RAID. And then the Crossdraft DOI for the grant is put in the um, envelope for RAID. So that's that's an example of how to do it in practice and how, how they're different. The grant being something you get from a funder, the project being something that you do. So RAID records the doing things, the, the deal, Crossdraft DOIs for the grant, the getting thing. Um, and the relationship with DMP, I think I've already covered. And... <clears throat> Uh, 
Question from Mel Melissa Harrison. Uh, as a publisher, do you see a benefit? Uh, uh, do you see a benefit to adding raids um, as showing the identifier as part of the article metadata to display to a journal article, or is it better to live with ORCIDs and the journal DOI just as being within the envelope? So to what extent does the RAID ID get included in article metadata? Well, that's a very good question. Um, <clears throat> I'm not really sure because it depends how you see articles and how you see them evolving into the future. I mean, at the moment, the DMPs aren't uh, something that's cited during the article so often. I mean, I know it's a trend that's going up, but it's not it's not really there. So it depends whether articles are now going to link to all things in the research or not. Um, but, you know, potentially if uh, publishers found that useful, then that may be something that could be done. Um, yeah, I think it, it could end, end up being something to do with the way that the use cases work, couldn't it? But um, for instance, I was thinking about a publisher like like eLife, which that works a lot in sort of obviously life sciences, biosciences. It might be that um, if, as raids perhaps um, had more take up, that um, funders or institutions would um, would, be, would um, be very keen to get them included so that they can you know. Do tracking, or maybe that the publisher themselves would would start to see a, a case or an instance for some kind of service, or feed, or be able to check compliance, perhaps using raids. But I think also um, thinking about different types of of, um, sort of um, publishing or scholarly communication altogether. I mean, it could be something in, um, again in the arts, whether um, particularly in the fine arts or as say or architecture, as we mentioned, where um, there hasn't been that much work or. Um, active um, interplay with with persistent identifiers to date, but um, you could see potentially have um, using a, a raid in, and say, an architecture journal, and, and they were thereby being being able to um, associate um, the article with with a, a range of entities that just hasn't been possible to to do before that. And again, that might be something that <clears throat> to the readers or that you know, like associ learned associations might might find helpful. Uh, just an eye on the time. We got one time for one more question, and then what we might do is bounce some of these questions into the Slack. Um, and Natasha, don't feel any compulsion to stay up until three o'clock answering these. Um, yeah, the Slack can will we, be there tomorrow. Okay. Can I? Um, move? Sorry, go ahead. Actually, uh, do you have something you want to wrap up with before we? Yeah, I think so. I think so because we've only got one minute left. Um, so thank you all for your questions. Um, and obviously people are sorting out in their mind what RAID is and how it works and where it sits. It is different to PID. Uh, it is okay. So there's a conversation there about PID graph. Are they a bit? Is RAID a bit like PID graph? Not. It's not powerful like PID graph. Um, in that um, I think there's been a lot more work done on PID graph. There's a lot more relationship tracking that can be done in PID graph because they're pulling in the, the actual metadata from ORCID and DOIs, et cetera. Um, so, but RAID is something that can be fed into PID graph. So that's, maybe that's a discussion that we, we need to have on Slack or, uh, you know, that we can have with Martin, et cetera. So, yeah, I think, anyway, so thank you all very much for your questions and thank you for coming. And, um, yeah, we'll engage with you on Slack and in other sessions. Um, really good to see so many people here. And, uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Yes, thank you so much, Natasha. Thank you so much, Fiona. Uh, really appreciate this. Uh, we'll be posting the slides in Zenodo, so you'll have access to that. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll continue this conversation on Slack. There's certainly a lot of uh, a lot of good information here, and you know, also shout out. Uh, this is currently an ISO standards development project, so if you're interested, um, ping to either Natasha or me uh, as the committee manager for the uh, overarching subcommittee that's running this project. So uh, we can get you more information. Thanks.